Grand Rising, how are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a wonderful Sabbath. Um, just something that the Most High just dropped into my Ruach. You know, every, anytime and every time, not every time actually, but most of the time, when the Ruach drops things, when the Ruach Hakadosh drops things in my Ruach, I will share them with you. Um, I have no reason to keep these things to myself. I don't get, I mean, I do get the, hey, don't share this from Yahuwah sometimes. But most of the time, I have to release it because that's what he wants me to do. So I do what he tells me to do. I say what he wants me to say. Because these are things, I know it's from him because... <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that it just boom, it just drops into my ruag, and I'm like, Ooh, where that, where did that come from? Okay, um, the word we we are in need to pray. Definitely, we are living in some serious times. We are living in some crucial, extreme times. We are in the last days. We are, and. We definitely need to pray. Definitely. Um, but, but, and it, this is for me too. I'm, I'm just, this is something admonishing all of us. We need to know how to pray. We need to know what to pray. Okay? Now more than ever. Okay? And, you know, we, we have prayer meetings. We call prayer vigils, fastings, and what have you. And we shoot these arrows. We think we're shooting these arrows at the enemy. And we're misfiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're misfiring. We're shooting arrows into the air with no target. Just shooting arrows in the air, point, point everywhere. We're shooting arrows everywhere. And some of those arrows are landing on our brothers and our sisters. Hmm? Friendly fire. And the reason why the friendly fire happens and occurs is because we don't know what to pray. We don't know when to pray. And, and, and you know, an example of Gosh, you guys are not going to like what I'm going to say. But the Ruach HaKadosh, you take it up with him because he's the one that put this in my Ruach. I promise you, okay? A, a, a contemporary example of misfired prayer, praying a mist. Hmm? In South Carolina a few years ago, in a church, inside the church building, there was a prayer meeting, okay? There was a prayer meeting. And a young Caucasian man named Dylan Roof casually came in and sat down and pretended he blended in, in the prayer meeting. And the saints continued to pray and pray and pray and pray. Huh? They continue to pray, y'all. And this went on for at least an hour, if not more. They prayed. They had a good prayer meeting that day. According to church standards and policies. Because if you could pray for an hour or more, that's 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 a powerful prayer, right? You did something, right? We all know what happened after that prayer meeting was over. Oh, we know how that prayer meeting ended. The devil was able to attend a prayer meeting. Huh? The devil was not only 
Did he attend a prayer meeting? He didn't just show up and start shooting people. Mm -mm. The devil attended a prayer meeting. Hmm? The devil sat down and was comfortable amongst the prayers of the saints. Huh? Go read the story. Go Google it for yourself. He, he didn't just sit there for a couple of minutes. He didn't just bust in the church and started shooting people. He sat in the prayer meeting and sat. The devil was comfortable. He sat comfortable amongst the prayers of the righteous. Yet those prayers did nothing. Those prayers did not cast out the spirit of murder and racism and hatred that was in this young man. And that led him to murder old people of African descent. Preachers, pastors. After a prayer meeting. Hmm? So how is it? How is it? How is it, how is it, how is it that, 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 that the saints prayed and the devil was comfortable in the prayer meeting? Huh? The devil was not, he didn't flee, he didn't run out. What happened? You know what happened? And please understand, I am not blaming the victims of that shooting at that Methodist church in South Carolina. I'm not blaming them for what happened to them. I'm trying to expose the works of darkness. I'm trying, the word says we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Right? That's what the word says. So how is it that the enemy sat in a prayer service and, and listened to the prayers of the saints? And then it's here, you done? Pow, 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 pow. How did that happen? The word says, not only to pray. Yes, we are to pray. This is not to discourage you from praying. The prayers of the righteous do avail much. But there's, a, there's other things that you need to do to effectively pray. The word says, watch and pray. There were prayer warriors present at the prayer meeting, but there were no watchers. There were no watchers at your prayer meeting. Huh? Because a watcher, let me, y'all know what a watchman, the watchman on the wall, what a watcher is, what he does. A watchman you know, a watchman can't, can't, he doesn't hang out with the people. A watchman sits up on a tower, sits up high above the people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he does that not because he thinks he's better than the people. He does that so that he could get a clear view, an aerial view of what's coming. You know, when I fly, right, when the airplane lifts off, it goes in the sky, you get a different view of things. It looks different. The world looks different from up there. Looking down, you look, it looks so different. It's totally different. It's beautiful. It's majestic. You, you, I'm in awe of the handiwork of the Most High when I go and fly and I look the clouds, the firmament. I look down on the ground. I look at how beautiful, how masterful, how creative the creator is. Anywho, you get a different view. You get to see everything that people on the ground can't see. Watchers have to go up higher because we got to see what's coming. What's coming on the horizon, over the horizon. We got to warn the people. Hey, 
This is coming. This is what you need to be praying about. This is what you need to be acting upon because because faith without works is dead. You, you can't just pray. But when you get up off of your knees, when you get up off of your face after you pray, not again, I pray. Yes, please pray. But after you get up off of your face, after you get up off of your knees, baby, you got to do something. You got to work. If you believe what you just prayed, then you your, your actions need to line up with what you just prayed. You understand? Oh, okay. So, 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 hey. The watchman will tell the prayer warrior, this is what you need to pray about. This is what you need to be focused on. This is what you need to act upon after you finish praying. Because this is what's coming up on the horizon. Huh? There was no watchman at that prayer meeting in South Carolina. There was no watchman. No watchman, because the watchman don't hang out with people, because the watchman sit up in the tower by themselves, they may not have social skills. Why? Because they're not social. <laughs> they weren't born to be social. They weren't called to be social. They don't have time to hobnob with you and kick it with you. Because they're too busy watching what's coming. Huh? If folks get mad and jealous and envious of the watchman, not understanding that the watchman, when something comes, the watchman get hit first. Because they're way up there. They're vulnerable. They're right there. They're... So they don't have time to kick it with you. They don't have time to be hobnobbing and fellowshipping with you. Not because they're rude, not because they're antisocial, not because they're arrogant, but because they're too busy watching. Huh? And the sad part is when the Most High do call watchmen. Hmm? And the watchmen tell the prayer warriors and the, the intercessor what needs to be prayed for, and people ignore. The warnings. Hmm? What does the watchman do when they warn the people and they ignore the watchman's warnings? <sighs> they get to sit back in the cut. Back up. Might come out, come down at the tower. The most when the most high say come down off the tower, don't you giving the warning. The blood, their blood is not on your hands. You got clean hands because you warned them. Hmm? You warned them and they didn't listen. So you, you, you I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna protect yours. I don't want you to look out the ark while I'm flooding the earth. I don't want you to feel bad because you warned them. Don't just pray, people. Watch and pray. And then listen to the watchers. They're not your enemy. They're divinely sent from the Most High to try to warn you and protect you from what's to come. You pray and you pray and you pray and the, and the Most High Sin Watchmen and you ignore them. Hmm? You slander them. You make fun of them and mock them and say that they're conspiracy theorists. Hmm? All right. Your blood is not on the hands of the watchmen. Because they did their duty. They did what the Most High said to do. And what you do with that intel is up to you. You could either pray strategic prayers based upon the, the intel that the watchman has given you, or you could ignore it. But your blood is not on my hand.